Hello, welcome to Call to the News, the What You Played news show. The only board game news show that, well, it's the only one that I host. It's not nothing. So I added this at about 3 a.m. last night to this script because I saw this picture. So something Seven Wonders Mystery is coming. It's like a legitimate mystery. No idea what it means, but it's definitely something. It's something. I'm intrigued. We start off this episode with news that made me go, ooh, not because it's haunted or anything like that, though maybe, who can say, but Siege of Rundar was announced by Ludanova, which is, and this is the part that got my brain all tingly, a new cooperative tower defense style deck building game by Reiner Knizia. And yeah, more than anything, it's the fact that this is a Knizia game that got my gamer senses going all wild behind my eyes because he's my all-time favorite board game designer. In the game, the good old gold mines of Rundar, which long ago dried up, have struck it lucky with a new vein of gold being discovered. The problem is that the only ones left guarding the weary fortress are you who thematically are a few dwarves. Orcs have gotten word of the windfall and set upon taking the gold for themselves before it gets delivered to the nearest stronghold. So you will have to tunnel your way to freedom safely while deck building, upgrading and combating the siege on Rundar. And I'm excited for this one. Is that because I'm always excited for any big box Knizia game? Yes. Yes, partly it is that, but it's also the Knizia twist on a co-op deck building siege game. Sounds good to me. So I'll be looking forward to trying this out when it gets released later this year. <laughs> and if Rundar is on your radar, let Questar kick you in the keister. This episode's sponsored by Keepers of the Questar. Keepers of the Quest Star from Upper Deck is a brand new original one-on-one -on -one dungeon crawler in which players explore a world where they can be both the brave adventurers and the cunning quest masters. It's like the board game equivalent of Face Off, ex except everyone gets to keep their face on. Delve deep into dangerous dungeons filled with magic and mayhem as you design a quest full of monsters and clever traps, set out to navigate your rival's quest and take your place among the elite adventurers of legend as you uncover the clues to capture the KG quest star. It's like the board game equivalent of national treasure. So stay vigilant because competing parties of adventurers are also crawling the catacombs to collect the quest star for themselves. Launch your own dungeon crawling campaign by finding it at your local friendly gaming store or by following the links in this video description to Upper Deck's online store. The Wicker Man. <laughs> Award season is here, or it's ending, or it's starting again. It's hard to tell, honestly, but winners of the American Tabletop Awards 2021 were announced, and I think some pretty wonderful games got recognised and while the crew winning another award wasn't exactly surprising as they took home the casual games category, Calico was a great choice for the strategy game award and Dominations took away the complex games award. But the award that made me smile most actually was the early games winner of Abandon All Artichokes by Emma Larkins because I really like that game. It's a fascinating take on both entry level gameplay and a bunch of clever twists on deck building genre where the more you think about it the more you go huh. That's a really clever little game that I have not once won. So congratulations to the winners and the good choices all around. <laughs> Camel Up 2 has been announced, which isn't a sentence I thought I'd ever say, but why not? The original Camel Up with its signature confusing typeface won the biggest award in board games in the world to Spiel des Jahres in 2014. So it's probably do a sequel. Camel Up 2 is not an expansion for the original game. It's a separate game taking place during the off-season in the illustrious world of camel racing. Off-season, according to Pretzel Games, will be full of family-friendly push-your-luck elements as you try to purchase goods and stack them up on your caravans to get powerful bonuses but stack too high. And it could all start going very wrong for you and your camels. It's going to be a summer release and based on the pedigree alone, I'm excited to try it out. <laughs> Up next is something that made Chaz start referencing a bunch of stuff I did not understand. I mean, at all. 
I just laughed and pretended I did, which is like how most of my interactions with him do go, honestly. Thank you, Matthew. You, you should write greeting cards. I'm here to let you know that Pendragon Studio recently announced that their deductive hidden movement game, Diabolique Heists and Investigations, will soon be coming to US retail markets. Now, this game here is not to be confused with the 1995 game based on the same property, Diabolique Il Copo Perfetto, which has received two reviews on its Board Game Geek page consisting of, quote, gift and check. Not the most informative of feedback, but at least it's succinct. Uh, Diabolic here originated as an Italian comic book series way back in 1962, and follows the adventures of master thief and occasional anti-hero Diabolic and his partner Eva Kant as they thieve, drug, and disguise their way all across Europe, all the while being pursued by the diligent Inspector Ginkgo. Now, the comic book series has gone on for decades, consisting of over 800 volumes, which which actually, make, make, actually makes me wonder just how good of a detective Inspector Jinko actually is, you know, considering that, you know, Diabolic's still at large after, after all this time. But regardless, the game, Diabolic Heists and Investigations, supports two to four players and is designed to play in 90 minutes. Minutes! Minutes even! One and a half hours. In it, players experience the impossible thefts lifted straight from the comics from both sides of the law. First, the criminal kings must complete two of three available heists in order to win, while their opponents portray the part of the law trying to prevent them from doing that. And completing heists will require not only stealth and cunning, but also a little bit of luck, because doing so leaves behind clues that their opponents can track. Now, Diabolic's movement starts out hidden, but if he's discovered, or if and when he's discovered, he becomes visible and then his M.O. changes to simply just escaping off of the board. <laughs> there goes Diabolic, making his escape. Sorry, Inspector Jinko, we've been foiled once again by the Master the oh. oh, I guess it's not as easy as I thought to capture, uh, capture Diabolic. Sorry, Inspector. Uh, I think I see now how 800 volumes can go by without, without, without capturing that guy. I was supposed to be doing a segment here instead of talking to imaginary people, so I think I'll continue. I hope that fans of this IP will find the game to be worthy of its heritage, whether they're familiar with Diabolik from the Italian comics, the radio show it had, the animated series, or where I first discovered the character, in its appearance as the film featured in the final episode of the TV show Mystery Science Theater 3000. And that's Diabolik Heists and Investigations. Uh, back to you, Matthew. Invest me wisely. <laughs> Yes, Chaz. <laughs> Magic the Gathering has run into some shortages for their latest set release, Strixhaven School of Mages. Strixhaven, set in the wizarding school of would-be spell slingers, looks fun. All their sets look fun. I love Magic the Gathering. I'm a biased news reporter. But my favourite way to play the game is drafting, where each player buys three booster draft packs and you get seven of your friends all together and you draft then you fight. And while admittedly, yeah, I'm not going to be around seven other people for the foreseeable future, even if it was, it seems that Wizards of the Coast have run into some vague problems with their set release, meaning what was originally planned to be out next week may have to wait a month, at least physically. You can still spell sling on Magic Arena. Let's be real. The other set and collector's boosters are unaffected, but the draft boosters unfortunately are. I've no doubt that they will get as much product on the shelves as possible as soon as they can, and though theories abound on the internet as to why and the how of all these problems occur, the draft packs will be on the bench for a few extra weeks. <laughs> La Granja, one of my favourite games, a big, beautiful, ingenious, heavy economic Euro game with wonderful multi-use cards, myriad options and devilish decisions. See? Biased. I'm a biased person. I love the game, and it's getting, it seems, the big deluxe board and dice treatment when they released this image a couple days ago. Board and dice have already given the big deluxification treatment to Yido in the past, another game that I really like, and the same upgrade looks like it's in store for La Granja. Do I put this down? How, what do I do with this now? Oh, geez. 
Details are scarce other than the fact that this will be an upcoming Kickstarter project. And I readily admit that these aren't products for everyone. I didn't back the Yido project and I don't know if this one's going to be something to separate me from my money. But I am tentatively interested and I will be looking at the page and I definitely know I'm going to be tempted. <laughs> hey, you, hey, let's wrap for a second. You got any, uh, you got any secrets? Huh? You got any secret news? Any hot leads? Any interesting tidbits going around? You got anything that I could know and then put in this video and then tell everyone about and not keep secret at all. I, news leads is what I'm essentially asking for. If you've got any news you'd like covered on this video series, in this video series, if you've got any news, send it me. News at what it played or just, you know, message me on Twitter. I don't know. Give me your news. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> And my last bit of tabletop news, which isn't really tabletop news, but do bear with me because I really wouldn't be surprised if Dorf Romantic gets a board game soon. Because at the moment it's a little indie video game taking the board game world by storm. Seriously, if I was a publisher, I would already have approached the developers of the game. Someone should do that. I know Ignacy Chevacek watches this. Get on it. So Dorf Romantic, currently only available on PC, they told me... Mac was the future. It's available now in its open beta, so it's still being developed and refined, but the indie developers at Tucana Interactive believed it to be in a great playable place, so they opened it up to buy early. In Dorf Romantic, the relaxing building strategy puzzle game, you'll be building an idyllic village in a peaceful and quiet world for points. Big points, get all the points. It's all about points. As you build out tiles in a Carcassonne reminiscent fashion, you get points for fitting things into your creation as perfectly as possible. These are little quests and bonuses, you know, like six grain fields around a windmill and, you know, deer want to be in the forest. Just cute, nice stuff like that. I think if you like tile laying puzzles that are beautiful and relaxing and infuriating and serene, then give it a go. I know I like it a whole bunch, and I think you might too. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all immensely. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>